Hi, Kurt Shaver, Chief Sales Officer of Vengresso, and I am here with Arlen Chudley. We are talking today about social selling success stories at SAP. Arlen is at SAP Hybris, and we're going to be talking to him. He's in Vancouver, Canada. Hey, Arlen. Hi, Kurt. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, so thanks for joining us here. Talk a little bit about your success with SAP. So uh, first, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us about your role, right, which group that you're in, and a little bit about how you got started using social selling. Uh, sure, so I am a part of the SAP Hybris uh, team, so selling customer engagement and commerce solutions, front office side of uh, SAP. And uh, I've been here just over three years now, and uh, I'm on the commercial sales team. So I, out of Vancouver, Canada, I actually support the Midwest of the U.S. for uh, for most of mid-sized businesses in the, the Midwest for customer engagement commerce. Um, social selling. Um, I've been using social selling, you know, even before SAP. Um, I you know you always use, utilize LinkedIn and you know, a little bit of Twitter and everything to uh, figure out who's in the zoo with customers and also you know different channels to reach out to them. But mm -hmm. at SAP, uh, it has accelerated, especially because. I am supporting a remote territory. Um, it's, it's been very important for me to uh, engage with my customers as much as possible, and build some credibility as well. So I'm not just some guy, you know, cold calling them essentially. Yeah. yeah. So um, actually, that brings up one of the points I want to ask you when you talk about cold calling. So in your role as an AE, do, yeah. like, do you do you have like SDRs? like upstream from you that would be setting up an appointment for you? And are you, are, so are you taking the call once an appointment's been set or are you generating your own appointments or both? Both, so we do have, uh, we call them a DDA team, so a digital demand agent team. So mm -hmm. uh, they're working very hard on just, you know, breaking down some doors, booking some meetings. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, any good salesperson will tell you, you can't rely on other people doing your, you know, uh, work for you. So right. uh, there is still a large aspect of uh, cold calling and um, you know prospecting. Uh, I would say more on the strategic side. So mm -hmm. you know focus on a, a subset of accounts and really try to understand those accounts and what they're you know what they're up to and you know ones that have identified maybe a good fit out of the gate and then prospecting that way rather than sort of the uh, more broad prospecting that the DDAs would be doing. So, so Arlen, do you have a target list that you are working on, like a finite target list? Uh, in commercial sales, we basically get every company that is in that patch that is under three hundred million dollars revenue. Okay. So there is, uh, they've uh, SAP has identified a lot of companies, which is in actually in the tens of thousands. Of course, naturally, um, you know, most of them could be anywhere from small mom and pop shops up to right large organization so um, it's not as many accounts as it sounds but uh, basically anything that is uh, any account that is under 300 million dollars um, it's fair game within my geographic territory. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so do, do you have Sales Navigator? Is it I do. Okay. I do, yeah. So, uh, so I want to ask you a little bit about this. This is just kind of good um, uh, knowledge to find out about people because I always like to, to put numbers on things so that people understand kind of the relative um, quantities. So, I mean, a lot of times when, when I'm talking to people about Sales Navigator, um, you know, I say to them, well, if, you're, if you have a very, very small number of targets, you know, let's say, you know, I don't know, you'd sell, like, let's say you sell jet engines to aircraft manufacturers. Well, you know, what are there, seven of them in the world? You know, I mean, so you don't necessarily really need something to filter out the noise if you only have seven prospects. Um, yeah. And then on the other hand, if you have like 100,000 prospects, right, it's, it's hard to like, how do you sort that out? But if you're somewhere in between that number, then obviously you can, you know, you can save accounts, you can save leads, and you can sort of filter out the noise to just throw in. So in your case, um, sort of like, like how many, prospects will you kind of be juggling like in like in your mind of people you're sort of looking at maybe having initial conversations you know what's what's the number is it 10 is it 100 is it a thousand I would say there's probably any one time funneling in and out of my 
focus is um, it's probably around a hundred accounts. Yeah. Okay. Um, so some gets uh, I bring some new ones in for whatever reason, whether I see some something that I should be talking to them and ones that maybe I haven't mm -hmm. had success with or kind of rolling them out. So I would say it's about a hundred accounts that I am, you know, actively yeah. uh, engage with. Yeah. At any okay. And so will, will, will a large percentage of those, will you, you save those accounts in your sales navigator so you can kind of keep a touch on them and things? I will. Yeah. I will use uh, sales navigator. I use sales navigator a couple of ways. So one is even just identifying it's another way to identify potential accounts. So, right. um, you know, there's a lot of tools out there, the Hoovers and there's, you know, Zoom infos mm -hmm. and all these things. But there's another way to search for um, a prospective account is through the type of people that work there. Yeah. So it may be, for example, in, the, in my world in e-commerce, uh, there may be a particular platform on the market that customers are having issues with that is a very good target for us to, mm -hmm. you know, move over to our solution. Sure. I will search even a geographic area in a certain size company for people that have experience with that platform. Makes sense. And it, yeah. It's a way to then understand you know if it's installed at that company, right? Install that company. And I know who potentially is involved yeah. in, that, in mm -hmm. that. So I will use it that way. Um, and then from there, whether it's account I've already identified or account I've identified through uh, navigator, I will obviously save them, track them. I will find a reason to reach out and connect to any, anyone. I think strategic in my case, anyone, on the sea level or along the end of marketing or e-commerce or anything like that, I will definitely um, try to engage with right out of the gate to build mm -hmm. some relationship there and hopefully they're following me and what I'm up to. Uh, and that is how I use Navigator. Uh, so I'm, in, I'm interested if you sort of have a, a rule of thumb in your own mind for your business about the ratio of um, the ratio of people per company that you might save in sales navigator. So, I mean, to use the sales navigator terminology, we would say how many, on the average, how many leads would you say you say per company? And um, let me just give you one example. I was actually, I had an interview with somebody at SAP success factors, right? And so success factors, a lot of that is focused on the HR, the talent, the organizational development side. But what he said was obviously IT often needs to be bought into it too. So, you know, you might have a couple of people from HR that would be involved in the decision and a couple of people from IT. So he said, you know, I'll usually have about four uh, leads, people, for every one account that I'm actually tracking. So again, you're in a different business on the commerce side, but did, do you sort of have a rule of thumb in your own mind that says, hey, you know, if I'm following this company, I probably want to follow you know, 1.3 or 7.2 or 8.1 um, people per account. Yeah, I, I don't have a, I mean, what I do is when I find that account that I'm, for whatever reason, looking at, um, mm -hmm. you know, I will start looking through the people and searching different things within that account of the yeah. people, whether they had SACP experience, whether they've had experience with commerce or marketing, and I'll kind of build out my leads that way. So I'd say it's mm -hmm. anywhere from like five, I have some accounts, I probably have 30 leads yep. uh, in those accounts um, across all the lines of business. Basically, in my case, anything other than HR um, at a high level, like someone at an executive level, anyone other than HR is, uh, is a target to start a conversation for me. So, uh -huh. uh, I, will, I will go pretty broad in that case. Okay, makes sense. Um, and talk to me a little bit about how you see using social selling um, in, in the two fundamental ways I think people use it. So one is an outbound prospecting way, which is a lot of what we've been talking about here. Like you're, you know, you're using the lead builder to search for profiles. Um, you're going in and finding who the company is. So that's sort of that outbound prospecting. And then you have the, the sort of inbound marketing aspect of social selling, which is, hey, I'm sharing content. I'm raising my visibility as a thought leader. I'm you know, serving up valuable information to my network so that they think of Arlen is the go-to guy. Um, so talk to me a little bit about kind of those two types of uh, social selling and, and kind of how you see them. Sure, so um, on the prospecting side, um, I actually don't, I use uh, LinkedIn and Navigator and those type of tools to find the people I wanna talk to and connect with them but I generally don't kind of, you know, indiscriminately reach out to people through LinkedIn. 
So I use that as a channel to build credibility and to get some visibility with these people. Mm -hmm. And then I'll usually, you know, use the phone or email to sort of almost keep the two things separately. And that's, I've yeah. had success that way. Yeah. Um, so um, on the, you know, content and so I, you know, I feel it's very important to share the right content at the right time, not just like spam crap into the, your feed just because. Um, <laughs> just because you can. Just because you can, which is so easy these days. So um, I'd also like to create a lot of my own content. So if I am going to run a campaign or if there's some specific reason or point of view I have on a topic that I think that my potential customers would, would be interested in, uh, I will throw that out there and I will share it with my network and I mean, I extend into what network will share that out. So um, it's been, that has been very powerful. Um, and that builds that credibility so that the next time you pick up the phone with that customer or, you know, you're reaching out to someone new in the account that you haven't reached out to before, maybe you've connected on LinkedIn through some, something like that. Um, you, you're looked at more as an expert in your field rather than just Absolutely. some sales guy. Yeah. So that has so, been super powerful. So when you talk about creating your own content, can you give me examples of that? I mean, are you talking about, uh, you know, simply like writing a short 600 character LinkedIn update? Or are you writing like articles on your profile? Are you, uh, I don't know if you're using the new LinkedIn video, which rolled out about a, a, a month ago. Or, so what, what's an example of original content? Uh, I usually kind of take more of the like article approach. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will write an article on topic. So for example, one of my, I cover the Midwest, one of my strategic uh, targets are wholesale distribution. So I wrote a piece on wholesale distribution and kind of my point of view on you know why and yeah. where, where commerce is headed in that space uh -huh. um i wrote articles on certain things that maybe sap customers would be interested in so if like you have you know a certain sap solution like by design you know erp um and you're looking at commerce well you should probably be looking at hybris commerce because of you know a, a, you know the various reasons mm -hmm. um and actually a lot of the articles i've written have gone, I wouldn't say like viral per se, but um, to the point where uh, in, if you search those topics, even in Google, they're one of the first results. Oh, great. From a LinkedIn post. So it, it so unfortunately it always doesn't always because in the world of SAP, we have pretty defined territories and there's a lot of us covering a lot of space. Right. But I'm getting, uh, you know, uh, I'm getting inbound questions and, you know, people wanting to, you know, talk about different things from companies and partners yeah. and even the world of SAP. The, the internet doesn't have a sales territory, right? Yes. So from <laughs> all over the world, I'm getting yeah. you know, people reaching out to me because of these topics and because I'm seen as a thought leader or, uh, you know, having some knowledge about whatever yeah. the topic it may be, which is, yeah. which is really cool. Well, that's, a, I mean, that's excellent. And one of the, I think one of the reasons, you know, I see uh, people that are, that are, that are really embracing it like you are is because they realize that those types of efforts are, are really setting you up long-term success in your career. You know, I mean, it's going beyond just your current role as an AE at SAP. I mean, it, it is positioning you both in growing your network and in growing your brand and reputation. I mean, it's setting you up for, for your career. So I think that, that, uh, you know, there's a lot of payoff that comes from, from those efforts. So, um, so let me ask you about if it, as success stories. I mean, people always like to hear, you know, specific success stories about maybe how some of these actions have, uh, have led to some success. We talked to SDRs and of course their success is really just the booking and appointment. But, uh, you know, it sounds like you're carrying things all the way through. So can you share like maybe a specific success story where some social selling tactic um, aided in the ultimate uh, outcome? Um. I, one one example was early this year is probably it was my largest uh, deal this year that I was uh, able to close. Okay, we were that's working a good with, start. <laughs> yes, we were working with an account and uh, uh, kind of digging in, kind of you know in the in the mud with the, the lower levels of the um, organization and not really getting up the chain like you know what happens very often. Right. And I took the opportunity to start through LinkedIn and you know start connecting with some of the. Um, executives and the president and stuff of the organization sharing some content with them and actually started some conversations online just like outside not specific to our you know converse not specific to you know the, the deal we're working on but just kind of 
po- you know, a point of view and, and yeah. have a, a, a conversation about. Well, you're, you're building a relationship, is what you're Yeah, doing. building a relationship outside of the, the thing that was going on that we're right. working on with this RFP and evaluation. Uh, and what that allowed me to do is the, the president, um, you know, from the moment I walked into the, to the door and, and, you know, the president was in, engaged because they weren't even going to be necessarily in some of these meetings. And I invited them through a separate channel mm-hmm. um, and I had that credibility. So when, you know, no matter what we were saying and, and when we came with a prescriptive approach to, you know, uh, how this deal was going to be run and how we were going to solve the problems and how this whole project was going to happen, uh, we had that credibility um, to, you know, to do that. Right. So yeah. uh, I was able to take that position of, you know, almost like authority and authority in that scenario and uh, really push the, the deal along. And the customer's still happy. I still have cadence with the president, uh, oh, great. you know, on a, on a weekly basis. There so you go. outside of it. So that, that is just one example of where social media allowed me to break down some walls, bridge some gaps and some relationships. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, Arlen, that's a great way to wrap it up. I mean, you got a success story, you got a customer out of it, you got a relationship with the president, you know, that you're uh, maintaining for, for that account. So that is an excellent use of social selling. want to Thank you for contributing to this success story project. Uh, any last piece of advice that you want to give to your colleagues in the area of social selling that you think is maybe overlooked or not understood or not used uh, maybe enough? Uh, only thing I would say is for, for all my sales colleagues and brothers is just to try and keep, you know, social media and the social selling real. And, you know, not, you know, it's really great. We have a lot of these tools like LinkedIn and all these type of things, but they're only going to be as good as, you know, executives and stuff see the value of being on there and not being spammed every day about, about nothing. So really use it as a relationship building tool, not as a spam, a spam or pitch tool per se. And yeah. that would be my only approach for the good of all of us. All right. Great. Arlen Chudley, SAP Hybris. Thanks so much for contributing to this social selling success project. Thanks, Kurt.